that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three. And the greatest of these is love. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 through 12. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish or tired, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we have come presenting ourselves at your altar. This is a new beginning for us. You have assembled a new team. There are new dynamics involved. We come from different backgrounds, experiences, the trajectories of our lives have merged that we would be in this place at this time. We accept the fact that we have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I know that I am where I am supposed to be this very moment. We are here because you called us to this time and to this place. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. And in order for us to get to this place today, you've had to rebuke death from our bodies. You've had to save us from a pandemic. You've had to rebuke the hand of the enemy. The thief that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And we know that once we say we're going to serve the Lord, the enemy makes us his target. Friends turn against us. People that we thought were with us leave us. But God, we put our all on the altar. Nobody told me the road was going to be easy. But I don't believe you brought us this far to leave us. And so, God, at this altar, we put every competitive spirit, every jealous spirit, every contrary spirit. We bring every grudge and put it on the altar. If there's anything that's happened in the past that has caused pain or division, we now put that on the altar. We cast all of our cares before you. I don't want to go into a new ecclesiastical year being bombarded by my immaturity to let go of some things in the past. I'm forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus and Father 
If we don't get any recognition, if nobody pats us on the back, if nobody calls our name, if you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, that'll be enough for me. I just want to hear you say, well done. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me give him some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your spirit today. Thank you for making us one. Thank you for molding us into your team. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. For the sake of emphasis, St. John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, a new commandment. I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three and the greatest of these is love, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Let us reason together for a few moments from this subject, a labor of love. Will you say that with me? A labor of love. Thanks be to God for this first Sunday in this new ecclesiastical year. The term ecclesiastes has to do with that which is set apart or called out. We are reminiscent of this term ecclesiastical with the book Ecclesiastes, where the writer who was Solomon was wrestling with his spiritual place and his calling to God. And in it, he said the words of the preacher. This is a different characterization for a book that is indeed included in canonized scripture because no other book places the focus upon the preacher. The other books say the word of the Lord came unto and that is the way we find it in major and minor prophets but Solomon was in a place of wrestling with his own personal calling and destiny one of the reasons why he was wrestling with it is because he had allowed what God gave him to become more important than the one who did the giving in the first place. The Lord 
gave Solomon a blank check. And in effect just said, fill it in. Ask of me anything you want and I'll give it to you. He was a young man when that question was asked to him by God, approximately 20 years old. Somehow he sought God for an answer and the Lord moved upon him to ask God for wisdom, knowledge, and an understanding heart so that I can know how to go in and out, how to serve this great people of Israel. He asked for the right thing and God honored his request by not only giving him wisdom and knowledge and understanding, but then God gave him a bonus to go with it, great riches and honor. But when God gives you something, you have to receive the gift. And then you have to take the gift without allowing the gift to take you. And because he violated that principle, he literally becomes obsessed with what he has and forgets who he was. Your real wealth and your real essence is not in what you possess. What God has called you to become cannot be defined by what you drive or what your zip code is. You have too much favor and anointing upon your life to allow the clothes you wear to define what God has placed within you. You are who you are by the grace of God. Don't ever let the world redefine you by outside auxiliary attachments. If you never ever again buy a name brand article, remember what your brand name is. The brand name for the kingdom is Jesus. And because the brand name for the kingdom is Jesus, you can't even get an answer from God unless you pray in the name of Jesus. I know that's a little heavy for you. You don't get answers by praying in the name of bishop, superintendent, elder, or minister. You don't get an answer by praying in the name of church of God in Christ. You don't get an answer by praying in the name of your particular auxiliary or fellowship. But once you start focusing on who's important in life, you start getting answers. You start receiving power. You start receiving miracles. You got to get away from being obsessed with things. Your name brand is not Gucci. It's not Louis Vuitton. Jesus never wore a name brand piece of clothing. And isn't it something that we wear name brand socks, name brand shoes, shirts, ties, hats, purses, by name brand cars. There's not a car on the lot right now that just says car. You got to have a certain name brand that projects a certain image that sends a certain message. You don't even have a television set that just says TV. Your flat screen is name brand LG and it'll tell you life's good. Samsung. You have name brand 
items, the makeup that you use is not generic. Even your makeup is name brand. Name brand, cologne, perfume, deodorant. Why have a name brand perfume and have a generic God? You never pray in the name of God because that's generic. If you want an answer from God, you got to use the name brand Jesus. Satan doesn't tremble at the name of God. But once you get specific about it and say, in the name of Jesus, the enemy knows you mean business. That is why we understand that Solomon, who has this term, Ecclesiastes, remember, being ecclesiastical references that you are sensitive to the call of God upon your life. Ecclesia or ecclesia as some prefer to say it means called out, set apart. It means walking to the beat of a different drama. It means that you are not like everybody else and you never will be like everybody else because you have been called by God for a specific and unique purpose. Hello? That means that you're going to have to stop trying to fit in because if God says don't fit in, then that means you're going to have to stand alone. We don't have a cookie cutter God who makes everybody the same. Yes, we have unity. Yes, we are one. But we are not carbon copies of each other. Being one does not mean that God does not respect our own uniqueness and individuality. God meant for you to be different because out of over 7 billion, nearly 8 billion on the people of the earth right now, nobody else has your deoxyribonucleic acid but you. Nobody has your fingerprint but you. Nobody has your eye print but you. Nobody has your voice print but you. God made you different even if you are triplet or quadruplet, quintuplet, twin, you still different from your identical twin. And that is the reason why in being called to servant leadership, we cannot allow our differences to be an excuse for division. Just because there's something different about you doesn't mean we can't work together, strive together, build together. Don't let your personality become an issue in building the kingdom of God. Because what God has called you to become is his personality living and manifested in you. He has called you out of Sagittarius. He's called you out of Leo. He's called you out of Pisces. You don't act like what you were born under. You act like what you were born again under. And anybody that goes around talking about, oh, I'm a Leo, I'm a Sagittarius, well, you, you, did you forget you've been born again under a new sign, a new nature? God has changed you radically. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are dead. All things are passed away. Behold, that means take another look at yourself. All things are become, I wish I had somebody to help me up in here today. That is why the word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians 1, 26, you see your calling or you examine, you perfect your calling. Make 
your calling and election sure. And that is why God is recalibrating us for a new season of service. You can't allow yourself to ever get stuck in the same rut. You can't improve and grow and be creative if you are always doing the exact same thing the same way you've always done it. you got to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to stretch out on faith. you got to launch out into the deep. you got to believe God for greater things than have ever happened to you before. you got to believe that God is is not finished with you yet greater works than these shall he do I believe God is going to do better in us and through us this year than he did last year I believe he's going to stir up our gifts I believe he's going to anoint us pour fresh all upon us I believe we're going higher if you believe it help me give God some praise today That is why as we observe what God is saying to us in a new ecclesiastical year, what he's saying is, I'm giving you a new commandment for the new year. I'm giving you a new rule, a new direction, a new orientation. My new commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. Notice the shift in emphasis. Jesus does not say my commandment to you is that you love God. Hello? Oh yes, read it for yourself. It's right there in your Bible in St. John 13, 34. He did not say my commandment to you is for you to love God. And the reason why he needed to place the emphasis on loving one another is because some people get along with God. They just can't stand you. Some people can talk to God, they just can't speak to you. And anytime you say you love God and ain't never seen him in your life, you can talk to God but can't speak to each other. You know you're on your way to hell, so why put on a front? I believe the word ought to get out on us that this is the love church. The word ought to go forth that this is the church that cares about people. The church that ministers to people's real problem. The word needs to get out that this is not a stuck up sedity nose in the air church. The word needs to get out. That if you come to this church, they don't have to know your name. They'll speak to you anyhow and show you the compassion and love of God. The word needs to get out. That if you want to feel appreciated and celebrated, not just tolerated, but celebrated, that you need to come to my area because Jesus said, by this shall all know that you are my disciple." Oh, it's getting a little heavy. No, sir. No, ma'am. Jesus did not say, I want you to love God. Because the people that killed them said they love God. And that's why we got to kill you, because we love God. And Jesus said the time will come when men will kill you and say they are doing God's service. You got people with twisted theology, false doctrine, doctrines of devil, seducing spirit. They love God. They just can't work together with you. Hello? That's why God is calling us into a different direction. God is purifying us. God is molding us, making us, which means he's turning up the heat because God wants us to realize one word can fulfill all the law and the prophets. One word can fulfill God's holy commandment. One word can get you into heaven. That word 
is love. I wish I had somebody to help me. Somebody say love. Come on, love, love. So that means that as we come before God this day, that we are placing ourselves before him as clay in the potter's hand because since you are the potter, I want you to build a better vessel than what I used to be. I know that there's something in me that yearns to fulfill the call to greatness. Greatness is not fame. Greatness is not name recognition. Greatness is not being a celebrity. Jesus tells us what greatness is. If anyone wants to be great among you, let him be your servant. Let him be your minister. What is the greatest commandment that you love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, your mind, your strength, and right next door that you love your neighbor as yourself? You can't get away from love if you're talking about God. Love is inescapable. Love is the indictment. Love is the judgment. Love is the standard. God is calling us back to love. You understand, going back to love means that what God wants from you is that same excitement and zeal that you had when you first got saved. Does anybody remember when you first got saved? Does anybody remember the first time God knocked you out on the floor? Anybody remember the first time you spoke in tongues? Anybody remember the first time you cut a step? When you used to dance on every song because you just happy to be saved. You didn't care who was a hypocrite. You didn't care who was real or who was fake. You just glad to be saved. I'm glad the Lord saved me. I don't have a heaven or hell to put somebody else in because I know it takes about six months for me to mind my business and six more months to leave your business alone. But I'm just glad he saved me. He forgave me. He washed me. He filled me. I'm so glad the Lord saved me. Anybody here glad you saved There is nothing that can compare with the excitement of a new convert. New converts have pep in their step. Can't wait to get back to church. We had a time last Sunday. We had a time Wednesday. I can't get to get back into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. What happened to you? Where is that person that used to love God passionately? What happened to that person that used to praise him, used to clap their hand, used to magnify? What happened to that person? God is calling us back to our first love. Let me hear somebody say first love. And that is why every now and then you got to Pep love up. Love sometimes need some extra oomph in it. Mm. Sometimes it's not that you are a bad person, but you just need to put a little more sparkle in your love. Because if love becomes old and stale to you, then it becomes something that does not empower you to seek the best for yourselves and others. And that is why Jesus said, I need to add something new to this love equation. I know you've been saying you love God for years, but let's put something new in it. 
direction. I'm giving you a new thrust. I'm giving you a new motivation. I'm putting the twinkle back in your eyes. I'm putting the excitement back in your relationship. God wants us to be excited about him again. God wants us to be turned on to Jesus Christ. God wants us to have enthusiasm when we worship his name. For when your love for God becomes stale and old and dilapidated, you don't care whether you show up at church or not. You don't care whether you serve God or not. You don't want to read the Bible anymore. You don't feel like praying anymore because your love has waxed cold. But if you want to change the world, love somebody. If you want to change somebody's life, show them some love. If you want to win people into God's kingdom, don't show them your title. Don't tell them, I'm Dr. So-and-so. I'm Bishop this. People are not moved by your position. They want to know, do you care about my soul? In fact, the saying is true. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Once they find out you really care about them, I love you. Even if you slept on the street last night, I love you. Even if you are between blessings, I love you. Even if you just got out of jail, I love you. Even though you might still be high on crack, you may not smell good, but deep down inside of you, there's somebody made in God's image. And if I really love you, I gotta love you in spite of your failures, love you in spite of your sins. God hates sin, but he loves sinners. sin. He hates sin so bad that when his son became sin, his son had to die. His son never committed sin, never engaged in sin. No guile found in his mouth, but he did something worse than that. He became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. And when Jesus took your and my sins upon him. God says, I hate what you have become. I've got to punish what you have become. It pleased the Lord to bruise Jesus. It pleased the Lord to punish Jesus. It pleased the Lord for Jesus to die. All we like sheep had gone astray. Every one of us had turned to his own way. But Jesus said, I will become the thing that God hates in order to share the love of God. God, I know you're angry at a sinful world, but don't kill the sinner. Kill me. Don't destroy the sinner. Destroy me. Don't wipe the sinner out. But let me suffer your wrath. And God took it out on Jesus. Slap Jesus. Nail Jesus. Spear Jesus. Put thorns in his brow. Rip chunks of flesh from his body. That should have been you. Should have been me. But Jesus took my place. Oh Lord. Jesus took my whipping. Jesus took my punishment. He was wounded by our transgression. Oh, 
our iniquities, chastisement of our peace is upon him, and with his stripes, thank God I'm healed. Oh, that's real love. I never met another person that loves me like that. I don't know anybody that says, I'll take your place. I'll die for you. I'll go to hell for you. I'll get up from the dead for you. Nobody loves me like Jesus. Why don't you look at somebody and wake them up? Tell them nobody loves you like Jesus. Jesus died for you. Jesus defeated sin, death, hell and the grave just for you. Jesus went down into the pit for you. But the grave couldn't hold him down. Death couldn't destroy him. Sin couldn't kill him. Hell couldn't keep him. He shook it off. Jesus shook it off. Shook off the curse of sin. Shook off the penalty of death. Shook off the grave. The grave couldn't hold him down. Shook it off. Come on and shake the devil off. Shake a bad attitude off. Shake a bad spirit off. Shake grudges off. Shake off bitterness. Shake off strife. Shake off anger. Sometimes you need a shake up. The Bible says stir up. That don't mean nothing but shake it. Stir up the gift that's in you. Look at somebody and tell them, God has put gifts in you. It's in your belly. It's in your bones. It's in your spirit. God has put it in you. What you need to do is shake it up. Shake up your witness. Shake up your testimony. Shake up your praise. Shake up your worship. Shake up your compassion. Shake up your willingness to serve the Lord. If the Lord needs somebody, here am I. Send me. I'll go. If God shakes you up, you get a new sense of priorities. If God shakes you up, you find yourself treating people differently. Somebody wonder what happened to you. You're the same person that I fell out with. You're the same person couldn't get along with nobody. But they need to know God shook me up. God renewed my spirit. God restored my soul. God put a fire in my bones. Fire, oh Lord, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Reason why I serve Him, I love Him. The reason why I witness, I love Him. The reason why I'm faithful, I love Him. The reason why I'm striving to be my best. To walk the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. I love him. Whatever your job is, love your job. I don't care if nobody calls your name. Love your job. If it's sweeping the floor, if it's sweeping down the cobweb, if it's sitting in the back, if it's on the sideline, love your job. Love serving. Love helping. Love being a blessing. Love encouraging. Love praying. Love lifting. Love worshiping. Say yes. Say yes. This 
sacrifice or the labor of love. You might have to cry sometime, but keep on working and keep on loving. You might get your feelings hurt, but keep on loving, keep on working. The Bible says God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. God has not forgotten you. God will pour out his blessings on you. God will show his favor on your life. God will fight your battles. God will open doors just for you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Somebody help me say, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Come on and help me praise him. It's a labor of love. Hallelujah. It's a labor of love. When you love what you do, it shows up when you love your ministry, when you love your calling, when you love the work that God has assigned to your hand. You get excited about it. You are happy. If I can help somebody, my living will not be in vain. Come on and help me pray again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh yes! So I just want to hear you say, I love my job. You got the greatest job in the world and that's of winning souls into the kingdom. I know it makes you vulnerable, but you know how you're going to win them? By the love you have one to another. I see God allowing this church to literally burst at the seams because there are hundreds of thousands of unloved people right outside our door. That's why some folk act out. That's why some folk act so crazy. Because they've been unaffirmed, unloved, mistreated, abused, oppressed, hated. And they act the way they've been treated. But if they ever run into one of the saints who says God still loves you. God cares. I don't care what you've done in the past. God loves you. You'll never be the same again. Anybody believe that today? Will you help me to get that word to our community? He's transformed us by his love. You may be seated. I want us to think about this. Meditate. You know, I want you to sing that song. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up, magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled. Let me tell you, love works, love works. Let's sing it one more time. Come on. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Why do you love it? Because you cared for me in such special That's why I'll praise you. I'll 
lift you up. I'll magnify your name. That's why. I want you to stay right there, stay right there. I'm so glad to see you, servant leader Barbara Brantley. Served for years, the president of the ushers. I don't know whether it's true or not. Somebody had said that you came in on a walker, but I didn't see no walker with you coming down this aisle. You walked down that aisle on your own with your hands lifted up to God. I just want you to know, we haven't forgotten you, and most of all, God has not forgotten your labor of love. You did it because you love God and you love people. This is Bishop J. Lewis Felton thanking you for joining us for the Mount Airy Kingdom Worship Experience. May you continue to partner with us as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. We love you in Jesus' name.